the Milestone series on recovery, tracking the milestones of the recovery world, chronicling the industry leaders, revealing their insights. Milestones, saving families, saving lives. Dr. Keck, you are one of the top 10 most cited doctors in psychology and psychiatry across the US. So tell us about your skills and your gift and your talent. Well, I've spent most of my career as a clinician uh, working in, with patients, uh, people with all kinds of um, psychiatric and psychological problems, and also as a clinician scientist, meaning I've been doing work with a group, um, really talented groups of people over the years, and that's been uh, a great blessing. We've worked with um, people with bipolar disorder, depression, um, all kinds of anxiety disorders, trying to understand the biology uh, behind those illnesses uh, as they manifest themselves in the brain and also trying to improve treatments. In the last 25 years or so in psychiatry there have probably been more treatment advances in that field, in my field, than in any other field of medicine over a comparable period of time. So your focus is on bipolar disorder. What's the advance? What's happening? For bipolar disorder we've come to um, all kinds of um, advances in the understanding of that illness. We know that unfortunately it's one of the most genetic illnesses of all medical illnesses, not just psychiatric illnesses. Um, we understand what parts of the brain are involved in bipolar disorder, although we don't yet understand what the link between the genetics and the brain areas is, um, and hopefully we will someday soon. Um, there have been at least a dozen new medicines that have been developed in the last 15 years for people with bipolar illness. Uh, this is critical because even 20 years ago there was really only one medicine, lithium, and if people didn't respond well to lithium or had side effects that made lithium difficult to tolerate, they really had no hope. Uh, there was no um, good alternative medicine. Uh, now we have medicines that are more effective, safer, and in conjunction with good therapy, um, life skills management, uh, bipolar disorder for many people is uh, a very manageable problem that um, can be treated to remission, to full recovery, and the goal is, is to sustain that recovery for most people. Dr. Keg, you said something very interesting about the link to genetics. Do we know why so many people today have bipolar disorder? I think we're just better at picking up um, the signs and symptoms of this illness. Um, and recognizing that um, classic uh, manic symptoms for some people are not necessarily the modal way that most people ha present with this illness, that there are milder forms, um, and that um, a lot of people with depression um, who were diagnosed with depression in the past um, sometimes have milder forms of bipolar disorder and it's sometimes difficult to call out the brief periods of mild manic symptoms when the depressive symptoms tend to predominate in someone's life um, unless you really pay attention to sorting those symptoms out. So since you're on the cutting edge, in fact you're leading the research into bipolar, you also have a clinic that you're working with in Cincinnati, Ohio. Yeah, at the, at the Linder Center of Hope, we, um, we're very fortunate to have uh, a center in, in the medical sense of the word. That means a, not just a hospital, not just an outpatient program, not just a residential center or a research institute, but we have all of those things under one roof. Um, so we have the advantage of taking new findings from the research institute and implementing them into clinical practice within months. So you connect the research and the actual clinical practice immediately. So if you say, exactly. we believe this works, you can actually test it. Exactly. Because there's always been a battle between the research, research psychology and even research psychiatry and the clinician. But here you can actually blend and say, yes, this really works. Indeed. In fact, um, at, at the Sipsi House, which is our residential program, um, we will have, um, again as an example, um, a consult by one of our researchers for someone who's uh, being evaluated there and if they have not responded to or had success with available treatments, they may be a candidate for a, a, a new treatment that's only available in a research setting that might offer promise that they wouldn't otherwise have. So 
looking back, what would you say is the one thing that you're truly grateful for the most? I've been extremely lucky to work with very talented people. Um, I, my, what contributions I made would never have been possible without working with my wife, Susan McElroy, who's um, a world-renowned researcher um, with other talented researchers. Uh, right now, we're working with Dr. John Hawkins, uh, Dr. Leah Casuto at the Center of Hope. Um, in the past, I've been very lucky to work with um, just some really talented people, and, and we work as a team. So whenever you talk about what contributions I've made, it's always been in the context of working with other people. So you're grateful for working with the best of the best and the fact that they work as a team. And what would you say personally that you're grateful for? Personally, I'm, I'm most grateful for my family. Um, I, we've been blessed with two wonderful children um, and uh, everybody's in good health. Now that's really significant when we're talking about people who are trying to break a battle, trying to recover the significance of family. What's your perspective on that? You know, psychiatry for many, many years um, was, um, I'll say, guilty of excluding family from treatment. Um, that in part had some underpinnings from psychoanalytic theory. Um, but again, I think is, is an, an advance, and it may seem commonsensical, and in fact, I think it is, you've got to include the family from the very beginning. Um, family members are essential in just understanding the scope of uh, an individual's problem. Sometimes families contribute to that problem. You need to understand that. And vice versa. Exactly, exactly. Um, mental illness is, um, like most medical illnesses, is not an illness that just affects the individual. It affects the family, um, and you've got to get the family's um, support uh, to help an individual's recovery. Um, educating the family about um, what, the, what is illness versus um, what are temperamental and psychological problems. What is organic and what isn't organic. Exactly. What they're contributing to the problem, um, if they are, how they can help um, an individual recover. These are really essential things. A moment ago, Dr. Kick, you were talking about working with the best of the best, a team that really work together as a team. So really you're referring to collaboration. On a broader scale, why is collaboration significant and critical within the industry to help people who have a problem, to help people who are recovering? I think it's been a huge epiphany that um, many centers around the country realize that um, they can't do everything for everyone, and we certainly don't. Um, I think our uh, great strength is the ability to diagnose someone's problems and then direct them to the right place for that person. Exactly. Um, Tom Parker, who is an essential part of our team, is, is uh, called it a network of hope. Um, places like Milestones uh, offer um, a, an incredible depth and breadth of services. Um, there are other, many, many other um, institutions around the country and facilities around the country that offer different um, components of treatment that an individual may need. Not everyone needs long-term residential care. Not everyone needs treatment for substance abuse. Not everyone needs treatment just for a mental illness. Uh, some people need hospital care and no residential care ever. Um, so tailoring um, a treatment setting and a treatment program to a specific person's problems and getting their family involved to support that is really the approach we, we take now. Could we simplify that by saying that your approach, the network of hope, is saying what is in the best interest of this person, this patient, this client? Exactly. Uh, our motto at the Center of Hope is patients and families come first. Let's not understand their problem fully uh, in a 360 degree approach. Um, this is essential. It, it, again, it sounds like common sense, but... But it wasn't common sense. You know, the word common sense isn't, doesn't, isn't really in existence because it's not common. Right. You should be calling it rare sense. Yes. But, but what you're saying is it's now becoming common sense or it's, or it's starting to at least be put into practice. What is your connection to Milestones Ranch Malibu? It really is, is part of this network of hope. Um, we collaborate around individual patients and families. We make referrals um, when people need treatment here. Um, we um, try to coordinate care very, very um, closely so that there are no gaps in treatment. Um, we do this not only for an individual, but we take into account geographical factors, uh, what's 
what's proximal to the family. Dr. Kate, what would you say is truly unique about Milestones Ranch Malibu? Well, first of all, the setting's fantastic. Um, coming up here this morning and seeing the sunrise um, in this uh, beautiful wooded uh, place is just... I see the smile on your face. It's unbelievable. The staff to, uh, to resident ratio is incredible. Um, it's about three to one. Uh, so people get unbelievably uh, individualized treatment, intensive treatment, uh, in a beautiful, uh, serene setting um, with evidence-based treatment. Um, the, the approaches here are uh, at, the, at the cutting edge of um, psychotherapy and um, pharmacology and group therapy uh, treatment approaches. You talked about the network of hope. What's your hope for the future? My hope for the future is that uh, the network grows stronger, um, that our understanding of um, the biological and psychological interplay in mental illness gets even better, that we can help identify problems earlier in people's lives before they get completely overwhelming and crippling, as they often do, um, and that we can do much more to prevent problems um, before they erupt into full-blown illnesses. Well, I'm truly grateful that you've given us this time and it's obvious that your skills and expertise are making a huge difference within the industry, helping a lot of people, and that it seems that you are truly interested in helping other people and therefore you're open and that's why you welcome and why you attract the best of the best to form your team. So I say thank you very much, Dr. Keck. Thank you. Right, it's been a pleasure. You too. Thank you.